audience? Audience, we found anime. We found anime, audience. We found gosh dang anime. Captain Allegra and the first mate after the first mate got turned into a woman. Your costume? My costume, Lonnie. So, as you can see, Lonnie is the first mate and Allegra is Sam. And yeah, those are some really nice piratey costumes. And here it is. And, well, as you figured out, the My Love, all that stuff, it's Sam's coming to term with being a lesbian. It's a really nice story. And it's all situated around what's happening here with these. Oh, is this Heavens to Betsy? Okay, let's just put that down what? there. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, open folder. Oh, is this what I think it is? Examine map. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is the map that tells us about things. Ah. Uh. I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner. I found a secret passage. And it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Oh my god, I have to go see this. We're skipping six. So if you're upstairs and we're in the closet, we can access it to sneak over someplace. So I'm, we're going to go do that now. Uh, we can now basically use the secret passage. Technically, we could have used it earlier, but I didn't want to spoil that. So that's the very first thing. Uh, but it leads right down to the library. And the <coughs> second thing is, let's see what this tape has to say. Oh, it's empty. Nothing. Nothing. So it's empty, so nothing. Okay. Let's go get that locker open. I think it's actually once we do the secret passage that we find out about the secret compartments and that leads us to being able to open the locker. Because, yeah. yeah. But we need to make sure we see and it shows you two downstairs items. Yeah, 0501. So yeah, she literally stole her locker from school and brought it home. That's impressive. Oh five, oh, and then we get to get inside. And hey, there's Lonnie with her hair dyed. Ninety four. Eh, I can see. Oh here. Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she Six. wouldn't look at me. This is a Christian channel? Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was, no there was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. Mm. I felt like I was going to cry, but I wasn't sad. Yeah. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie, do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. Aww. <laughs> then she punched me in the gut and said, no, call me a bitch. <laughs> now we take the key, so we got the basement key. Oh, I love this. Gosh, Sam. I love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it because the entire joke is that Sam didn't realize she was a lesbian, but Katie did. Way back when they left. There was nothing wrong. Yeah. It's that that journal entry was the one we got. So I, I'd like to point out that, that that's one of the big jokes about this is actually the fact There's that... There's something under there that we didn't yeah. completely miss. Yeah, but I would just like to point out that throughout the entirety of the story, at some point we get a note which is basically Sam realizing that uh, we already knew she was a lesbian. <laughs> we just never said anything because we needed her to discover herself. And it's amazing. Oh wait, I love this. I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker. <laughs> Good idea. What uh, cool kids are doing is uh, write me back. Uh, yeah, look at this cat riding a motorbike. Uh, beep beep. To make it even better, maybe I should just stick it in there. Right How do you know that they're about to be abducted by <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, and they watch 902. 1 0 because that's a thing people watch. To be fair, it is a thing people watched. And Didn't watched. they reboot that recently? Yeah, they did. They did. 
That's the Hawaii Five-O, right? It's like no, a uh, Hawaiian cop the, show. No, this is a area code in California for a school district, basically. Oh. All right. So. Yeah. Anyways, let's use that secret passage. See? With the crypt doors quick and the tombstones quake, spooks come out for a swinging wake. Yay! Wow. Not creepy at all. Oh, yeah, anyways, I like this. So, this is basically where we get the. Yeah, so she shows us where the secret passage are. Hidden compartments found. Three. Library upstairs for you. So, there's one in the library. Evans and the Supernatural discovered zero. Yeah, we get to do the library one now. Sam and Monty, secret house investigation log. Hmm. So yeah, we're going to do the library one now. So yeah, as you can see, we mark it, it shows up now. We've done the one, we've got to do the other one. It's over here. Mm. Hello? Be right back, Jeff. Okay, that was that was helpful, Crystal. That was so helpful. My mother decided to be super helpful. Helping. And by helping, I mean just talking about things. Anyways, yeah, basically there's a bunch of secret panels. And because we're investigating our sister's footprints, we're figuring out about them. Yeah. Uh, basically, this one just shows us another Misfits flyer. And gives us another At Todd's journal. brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. Nice sticker. I was turned toward her. My eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. Ooh. In the dark, lesbians. she smiled. Aww. My Friendship. heart was beating so fast. In love. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me, and was so close, and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head, and I really hoped she could tell. I really hoped that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook-up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. Oh. Katie, please, whatever you found, don't tell Mom and Dad the attic. Yeah. Anyways, there yeah, we can go into the basement now. See? Basement. And in the basement, we find... I don't know. Oh, this place is huge, though. Look how big this house is. Christ in a handbag. Oh, yeah, by Why the way, I the basement's Christ super creepy. Because, yes. I know. Chairs and uh, potato chips. Is that what that is? Yeah, yep, potato chips. chips. <laughs> it says grab chips. They're potato chips. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, oops, oops, oops. Yeah. This is what happens when you're recording a game. Examine. Aw, Sam plus Lonnie in a heart. Because they... It's different now. Aw. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But, but now, now no, no one, one else, else is around. Is around. Well, you know, so you could say we're dating, but it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone, <coughs> we say I love you. So as you can see, we're really smart. We have first place in science emblems. Also, here we go. 
This is the same sex ed assignment that um, Sam was given. And we wrote it as well. And you can see we literally wrote it clinically. We're a much more um, clinical person, you know, a little bit more dry. We're Sam's the creative type. We're the science type. Uh, here's our plaque. Uh, K is for kind, A is for amazing, I is for intelligent, T is for talented, L is for lighthearted, I is for important, N is for nice. For nuclear! And basically bombs. that's also, those are basically a bunch of hints about the differences in the character. Caitlin is very kind and is super, super talented, super, super um, important to the family and super intelligent. She's just good at everything she does, whereas Samantha is very creative. And all over the place. Also, as you can see over here, I yet. the boiler. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, this is where we get to the really dark truth about why certain things happened. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Dear Samantha, Creative, please inform you on the initiation to creative writing track at Reed College Summer Program. For the scholars of 1995 session, we believe how much the community. Okay. Based on your portfolio and academic record, I'm pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 70% of your program's tuition fees. 70%? 75. So, would she have to pay like 800 left? 75% of it being paid, but you know, 800 probably is still active. I'm so stupid sometimes. Oh, yeah, here we, go. here we go. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing. And I was all making plans, like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I yeah. guess she's been planning to join the army right after high, high school, school since she was like... 12. 12. Yeah. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Yeah, and now you can see what's happening and why. It's one of Dad's books with something stuck in it. Uh, the Accidental Savior. Thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a monument. I certainly recognize my son in the subject matter. An author's work is the externalization of what he holds dear and what he fears. And that is respectively your work was successful. But the lens through which the person alone shown was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible diameters. Science fictional day machina, the great authors speak of life's milieu in clear and honest tones and lends a crystal and refractions. Richard Greenbrier, with a father's love and encouragement, Richard Greenbrier. So basically, this is. That is a letter from our granddad. And he basically read dad's book and then basically wrote a letter saying that he understands exactly what the dad's writing about, but he thinks that he needlessly clouded it with. Um, well, Use metaphor and science fiction. Mom's citizenship stuff. Illegally immigrated. Well, it's time to send her back to Mexico. This is Trump's America now. <laughs> I think that's mom's citizenship stuff. Anyways, now here's the thing. We're going to find out why Dad wrote a science fiction thing about um, the president's assassination and why it's connected to something that happened in his real life. X-ray specs. Random. Samantha Greenhire. Ooh. We, we There's the more to Yeah. I'm so uh, dear. Oh, okay, this is basically just Lonnie Brain to Sam. God, it's a wall of text. It's not that much. Audience can read it if they want to. Even you're getting tired of the reading. Uh, there's Stuff just a lot of it in this you. game. Yeah, anyways. You also you missed the door back there. No, I haven't. That's the door. I'm pretty sure you did. Oh. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. 
Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit, and he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? Ah, I can't see the like, text. Probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. I and I finally got to see them play in Todd's, Todd's basement, basement today. Today. And she's actually really, really amazing. amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm going to be at every single show. So in other news, we also now know that Grandpa is really cynical and clinical when it comes to his writing, even towards his own son. And that's an important facet of his relationship with our dad. And it's more of the same stuff with punk music for the band. Right. Uh, is there any lyrics? Nope. I'll just throw that over there. Oh. Now this is what we need the assassination date for. I know this. So, we need JFK's assassination day. Let's God damn it. Oh, by the way, here's this. Look at this. Uh, there we go. We got it. 1963. By the way, look here. Uh, this is our dad. Age 6, age 7, age 8, age 9, 10, 11, and then 12. Look. So our dad used to come down to the basement and have his age recorded. Hmm. So it's 1963. So... Um... What the fuck? Return to sender. Uh, Great. Ignore the call. Yeah. Let's... We'll end the session here because we're just going to... We're going to actually swap this over to... Uh, we're gonna make this displayed because we're gonna need that for this some yeah. of this stuff because it's all handwritten. And just let's just continue with this though. I'm actually, you know, oh, yeah. curious of what the fuck's going on. Oscar Mason, Mary Grind Greenbrier. Dear sister, I write what shall be my last appeal to go unanswered one way or another. I feel a prisoner as on an island with no jailer, no human soul for commune, only one mind examining itself endlessly, endlessly, something searching for relief. In the years since transgression, transgression, I have sought no absolution, only bare forgiveness. In good faith, I have removed myself from all temptation and sacrifice to prove my commitment, however I can imagine. Since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin. To be treated as a human again, to breathe the air of human spirit once more. By grace, even a wretch like me could be saved. But I do not expect it. If not response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence and one day simply cease to be. With a brother's love always, Oscar Mason. Don't get it. I'll explain now. This is why this game is very dark in some ways. So, note how the date to open it was 1963. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. Yeah. JFK was killed, I think, around Thanksgiving, actually. But here's the more important thing. The date that opened the locker was 1963, and it's a locker from our great-uncle. It hasn't been opened in a while. It has a letter of him apologizing and saying, basically, I am deeply sorry and I can't do anything more oh. than that. Oh. It doesn't work. Notice this room doesn't work. Uh, I'll explain. And here it we go. No. Here's a grab. Let's grab. Uh, order this month. Two cases of brandy, two cases of rum, one barrel whiskey. Governor Marines very pleased with enforcement in Boone County. Believe this range shall hold for some time. March 23rd. Uh, basically, this house was also a, a booze smuggling house during Prohibition. The audience, we're going to get really dark here. This is going to get all the way up to 18 up. Also, as you can see here, we can click these to... Yeah. As you can hear them ring out in the house. I can't. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't. The answer is, audience, and this is why the dad noted about this, the JFK thing, how it's personal. Uh, great uncle, um, great uncle, uh, he, he, mur he did the assassination, what? No. 
I'll, I'll just say it outright. Audience, we're hitting. Audience, pause, trigger warning. I'm actually going to say it. Trigger warning. This is a legitimate thing in this case. I'm triggered. We're, we're being legitimate here for your safety. Great Uncle Mason molested our dad. Okay. Great. See, Great Uncle Mason it was gay and some other things. And basically, Temptation got to him one day and he basically immediately regretted it. And it broke him as a family man. It broke the illusion of him being a loving uncle to everyone. And no one ever in the family talked to him again. He died alone. we That's why we don't know anything about him. It's why um, Dad's story is centered around the JFK assassination because of his own traumatic experience with it. It's why he's appealing for forgiveness because he doesn't deserve it, but he simply, you know, acknowledges that he doesn't, but he still wants to apologize because he can't do anything more. It's why he leaves everything to his nephew and not the rest of the family because his nephew deserves it all because it's his mistake. And you know the the son did love this house at some point so he's giving it to him the house that he loved before well thanksgiving 1963 yeah. yeah it's very dark it's very sad and now audience we're back with the trigger warning i'm here on a stupid class trip because it's March, and I don't know if anyone that's running the school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy as shit in March. I wish we were here. Oh, wait, you're right here because I'm writing this to you and give shop. Oh, shit, here you come. Hold on, hold on, phone. No problem. We're going to end it. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. Ooh. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. I think that's kind of funny that she's saying that. But anyways, audience, since Jim had to go pick up that phone call, I'm yeah, gonna I'm, I I read that, yeah. but um, yeah, basically, we on on time. Yeah, we're gonna end the episode right here when we reveal, hey, secret doorway, and yeah, audience, uh, yeah, that. Sorry that you had to get that dark story, but we're just gonna climb up here and look, dude, dude. Wow, see, this is more new. Jesus. But yeah, this house is huge. Look at how. Yeah, this house is huge. Where does this lead out to? Oh, by the way, that's... Oh, my God. Okay, just end the episode. Yeah, I'll be we're back. ending the episode here. Bye, audience.